and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on spondylolisthesis. It is defined as a vertebral displacement where there is a forward translation of the upper vertebral body over the lower vertebral body, as shown in this picture over here. It usually occurs at the L4 and L5 region and is due to failure of the normal laminate facet locking mechanism. There are a few causes where the pneumonic, pneumonic is SPOTED spotted. So the first cause, which is also the most common cause, is spondylolytic cause, where there is a break in the pus at the interarticularis. It is often seen in young patients and they might present with intermittent back pain, the buttocks look flat and also on spine palpation, step deformity can be felt. Other causes include pathological cause like neoplasm and also destructive conditions like TB infection, Operative cause due to laminectomy for decompression, trauma, elderly or degenerative, which occurs in 25% of the cases. It could be due to osteoarthritis, degeneration of the facet joints, usually occurring at the L4 and L5 region, and also dysplasia, for example, congenital lumbar sacral facet joint dysplasia. This condition is seen in children. So for clinical features, Typically, a child or adolescent with spondylolysis will present with low back pain or pain that radiates to the buttock or posterior thigh. And the onset is usually insidious and related to spots. Um, with people who have dysplastic spondylolysis, for example, a child, they may have typical flat buttocks, a vertically oriented sacrum, and palpable lumbar sacral step. Hamstring tightness is also common and may result in flex hips and knees. Neurological examination may reveal nerve root tension signs, especially at the L5 root. Whereas for degenerative type of spondylolisthesis, it usually presents in middle age group with chronic low back pain, spinal stenosis signs or radicular pain. The walking distance is usually restricted and the symptoms are relieved by forward flexion. So this is a picture showing a patient with spondylolisthesis where there is transverse loin crease, forward tilting of the pelvis and flattening of the lumbar spine which are characteristic findings. For imaging, you can do x-ray of the spine. Oblique view can show the Scotty dog sign which is a classic sign, a pathognomonic sign of the spondylolisthesis where there is pus fracture with a broken neck or collar. Whereas lateral view can show the forward shifting of the upper part of the spinal column onto the stable vertebra below. And they may also show an elongation of arch or defective facets. This picture here shows the Scotty dog appearance. So these are some more pictures for spondylolisthesis. In the first picture, picture A, there is a break in the pus interarticularis of L5, which allows the anterior part of the vertebrae to slip forward. In B, in degenerative spondylolisthesis, there is no break in the pus. So moving on to management of spondylolisthesis, conservative treatment is suitable for most patients and is based on symptom management. So some of the conservative management are short-term bed rest, restriction of activity, pen medication or NSAIDs, muscle relaxants, steroid injections, physiotherapy, and also bracing. Operative treatment is indicated if the symptoms are disabling and interfere significantly with the work and daily living of the patient, or if the slip of the vertebra is more than 50% and still progressing, or there is significant neurological compression, then the surgery that can be given is for example like spinal fusion. Those are some of the indications for surgery. So that's all for this video, thank you.